So let's continue uh, by finding derivatives of these things. So these next, this next one, we're gonna need to break this up because this does not match up to any of the rules that we've seen. Uh, it doesn't match up to the power rule. The power rule does not look like that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna split this apart. Uh, so we're gonna do the nine X to the fourth over X squared. So that'd be nine X squared. Negative six X squared over X squared, so negative six. And then two over X squared would just be two X to the negative two. And now you can do your derivative. So 18 X, the six is just, just goes to zero. The negative two pulls down and multiplies to the positive two. So that'd be a negative four, x to the negative third. So you could, if you wanted, you could rewrite that. You can flip the x to the third down. And if you really wanted to, you could keep going and get a common denominator and combine everything into one fraction. Okay, uh, part F. First thing I would do is just change them either on paper or mentally into exponents. And then you can do the power rule with each one. And typically, when they're like this, if you have like multiple terms and they each have like fractional exponents, there's not a whole lot you can really do or there's not a whole lot you, you would want to do. If you were gonna do anything to them, you know, you could flip them down to the denominators. You can change it back to radicals if you wanted. Um, I don't think I would get a common denominator though. That's just gonna be, it's not gonna simplify if you do. Um, so I think I would probably stop myself at this one, but I mean, you could do this if you wanted to. Okay, let's look at an example like what we did in uh, 3.1. So find an equation of the tangent line. <clears throat> okay. So that means you're, you're going to need the derivative because that gives you the slope. And anytime you want the equation of a line, you need two things. You need a point, which you have, but you also need its slope. So get the derivative. Just now we can use those rules instead of the limit stuff. So the derivative of x is 1. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Plug in the x value of the point, and we get 2. So that is your slope. So you can use point-slope formula or realize, hey, you've got the y-intercept right here. So you could just use y equals mx plus b. So 2x plus 1. Okay, let's look at part B. This one, um, you can't do the derivative yet because you have a product. And the power rule does not deal with products and neither do the other rules. So get rid of the product, just distribute it. So 3x squared plus one, so that's your derivative. Plug in the x value of the point. We end up with one and that is your slope. So you could use point slope formula again or go, hey, this is just the y-intercept again. And you could use y equals mx plus b. So just y equals x. So a lot faster than using that limit definition. All right, part six, or example six. Determine the point or points at which the graph has a horizontal tangent line. So let's do part B since it has a trig function. So it's talking about a horizontal tangent line. So anytime, like a horizontal tangent line, 
you know, tangent line. What else, you know, what was a tangent line? Well, that was the derivative. Because <clears throat> the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Well, if it's horizontal, that means that the derivative is equal to zero because what's the slope of any horizontal line? Zero. So we're gonna find the derivative of this and for root x or root three times x, the root three or the, sorry, the x is not inside the radical. So the derivative of root three times x is just root three. The derivative of two cosine of x is negative two sine of x. And we're gonna set it equal to zero and then we're gonna solve this equation for x. So I get the sign by itself. And then using your trig skills, where to sign equal root three over two uh, in between zero and two pi? Well, that would be pi over three and two pi over three. So it says determine the points, not determine just the x value. So if it wants the points, you gotta also give the y coordinate. So we're gonna take pi over 3 and the 2 pi over 3 and we're going to take those and we're going to plug it back into the original function. Anytime you want the y coordinate you got to go back to the original function. Don't go to the derivative that's just going to give you zero uh, every time because that's what you just solved. So go back to the original equation to get the y value. So when x is pi over 3 you get pi root 3 over 3 plus and then if you stick pi over 3 in a cosine that comes out as a half times 2 is 1. You could combine this into one fraction if you want with a common denominator. Don't have to. Okay take the 2 pi over 3 plug it into the y equation and you get 2 pi root 3 over 3 minus 1. Okay, so part A, you would do the same thing. Actually, let's just do it. That'll, this one will be fast. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and x comes out to equal three. So then take it, plug it back into the original equation, and y equals negative nine. So sometimes you get more than one point, Sometimes you only get one, and sometimes you might not get any. It might not have a horizontal tangent. It just depends on the function. All right, let's go ahead and stop here, and we'll continue in the next one.